Hey, how you doing? I'm Van. Welcome back to the only channel on YouTube that will ask you to subscribe. None of the others are doing it. Don't really know what's wrong with them. But subscribe to my channel so these morons can't take advantage of my idea. Welcome back to my six-part series on Captain Planet. Or more specifically, the worst episodes of Captain Planet. We're taking the lowest rated episode from every season of Captain Planet, as rated by IMDb. And we're watching them. It's very exciting stuff. Very original content. And I'm having... Fun? It's really fun seeing how bad the show is, but at the same time having to sit down and actually watch it kind of reduces my enjoyment a little bit. Quick aside, I want to apologize. I, I said Mati was from India before. Uh, he's from South America. So, uh, yeah, that's my bad. Luckily, we're on part four, meaning the majority of it's out of the way. But that still means I have to sit through the Hanna-Barbera seasons. Our world is in peril. Gaia, the spirit The now defunct no company known as Hanna-Barbera was founded by the Tom and Jerry creators, uh, something Hanna, something Barbera, I don't remember their first names. But the production company was incredibly successful for the time, being able to produce cartoons with speed and precision that wasn't really seen in a lot of other production companies at the time. Hanna-Barbera was known for the quickness at which they could produce the cartoons that they aired. Part of this was due to them saving time through various means, whether that's looping animation or having pre-painted backdrops, which sometimes, and generally actually, look better than most of the show around them. But between seasons three and season four, the production comp- the produ- <clears throat> Between season three and season four of Captain Planet, the production company swapped from Dick Entertainment, who are the most unfortunately named production company I've ever known of in my entire life, to Hanna-Barbera. Not really sure why, not really sure what happened there, I just know it happened. And this probably is not the best episode to watch as my first introduction to the Hanna-Barbera seasons. That episode is You Bet Your Planet. A quick rundown of the episode before we really dive into it, because the plot's confusing and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, and I probably won't really be able to talk about it through all the insane nonsense that happens throughout the episode. But essentially, Planeteers find themselves in a cave. For no known reason, we don't know anything, Gaia won't talk to them for some reason, their rings aren't working, and also Captain Planet is not responding. Then they immediately find themselves on an alien game show with all of their worst villains gathered together at a table, fighting for the fate of the world because it is so polluted. They win, of course, being the good guys, but they don't deserve it, they don't earn the win, and it's really convoluted and really dumb. The entire plot of the episode happens in the first two minutes, like... All of it is dumped out right there, and then they just, they're just they just playing the game show for the rest of the episode. We never really get a firm explanation as to why they're there. We never get an explanation as to how the aliens... <laughs> which is something they did. <clears throat> we never learn where Gaia is or what happened to her. Her voice isn't even in this episode, because I assume they couldn't pay Whoopi Goldberg enough to show back up and reprise her role for this season. Either that or Whoopi Goldberg just didn't want anything to do with it. If you like this video, please subscribe. If you don't like this video, please also subscribe, but tell me why you don't like the video in the comments below. Give me 35 comments on why I'm a garbage human being, and I may, uh, I don't know, cry? <laughs> So before the episode even begins, I want to point out that the episode's intro, its title crawl, its opening narration has been redubbed by... I didn't look up the voice credit for the narrator before this episode. I gotta admit, I kinda like the old guy better. None of this makes any sense. I just wish we knew what happened to Captain Planet. Oh my god, they look like crap. <laughs> like... Okay, they don't look terrible, but the Wikipedia article for this season specifically states that there is a noticeable improvement in animation quality between seasons 3 and 4, and I disagree with every fiber of my being. And it's immediately apparent, too, because just looking at the Planeteers, every single one of them has the same walk, the same body type, the same everything about them other than their faces and skin colors. Everything's the same. They also move in the same way that a lot of other Hanna-Barbera characters do, like this, I guess. I guess that's what that is. But yes, we cold open with them with no powers, with no idea why they're here, with no access to Captain Planet. This, to me, shows that Hanna-Barbera has absolutely not a single goddamn idea what they're doing with this property. Because it was my belief that the Rings got their power from Gaia, which then, together, could create and summon Captain Planet. However, now, their powers are directly tied to Captain Planet, and without him, their powers are useless. Meaning that they are not their powers. They are Captain Planet's powers, which is not how that works. Yeah, he's been gone over a week and I kind of feel naked without my firepower. If you know what I mean. 
I... <laughs> We're gonna let it slide. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is this? <laughs> like, okay. I know aliens are already, like, a canon thing in Captain Planet. They've been in a couple of episodes before this one. But usually... One alien is the focus of the entire episode. This one just drops 3,000 different alien species, the implication of an entire galactic empire spanning the entire galaxy, powers beyond our wildest reckoning, and they do it to host a shitty game show. <sighs> and to just start the episode this way with a giant floating mouth next to a big beepy computer machine and hordes of aliens just sitting in the stands, I am... Concerned. I'm, I'm concerned immediately. That said, I do like this guy. Lexo Starbuck! <laughs> he's a funny little dude. He's a lot of fun. He's, he's real entertaining. Casey Kasem is this guy for some reason. I guess he was still being paid big money by Hanna-Barbera just to show up whenever they needed him to. But I immediately recognize the man. Like, once you've watched Scooby-Doo Where Are You enough times, you really start to recognize Mr. Kasem. I can't remember when I've seen an earthier looking bunch. <laughs> Can you audience? He was a radio DJ. That's a job that people like got famous for. Do people still get famous for being radio DJs? I really don't know. I don't think they do. Now you gotta have a podcast. They are at an alien game show where the fate of the entire planet is now at stake against the returning champs. These guys. You bet your planet. Are you returning champions ready? <laughs> doing here now i think the intention behind calling them the returning champs has to do with the fact that the earth is already the most polluted planet in the galaxy according to this guy right here so technically they've already won however these are literal actual people playing a literal actual game show that they've never been on before so they are not returning champions they are a bunch of tools i'm sure you're all familiar with our show we're numero uno in the galaxy See, it's funny because he's fat. We've decided that the situation on your planet has reached a critical point. If the eco villains win, they'll be free to trash the planet! Who is in charge of running this game show? And who gives them the power and the ability to allow the evil villains, the bad guys, the, the, the baddie brigade right here, these five bitches, who allows them to trash the planet on their victory? Who's to say that Gaia in her all-powerful magical bullshit, doesn't just, like, cause an earthquake or something. Tsunami, she burned a city down to teach Wheeler a lesson. She can handle a couple of aliens. But it's okay, it's okay, don't worry about it, because we're immediately on to my next problem with the episode. Well, Lexo, the answer is behind curtain number one. How'd they get Captain Planet? Much like everything else in this episode, we never get an explanation for it. But I would like to point out the fact that Captain Planet is not supposed to be a solid entity for more than a few minutes at a goddamn time. He's supposed to exist within the rings of the Planeteers, and they combine their powers to create him for a brief period so they can have their problems solved. Instead, here, he's captured and useless for the entirety of of the episode. He does nothing. They do not combine their powers, because apparently their powers have already been combined. With no explanation, mind you. Not one! Let's talk about something else. Wheeler and Linka are the main characters now, by the way. Nobody else has any semblance of personality left from the previous seasons. Kwame has been reduced from the leader to just some guy that sits in the background who walks in front of the rest of the group sometimes. Like, that's all he does. Mati barely even speaks anymore. I don't know if this had to do with budget reasons. I don't know if this had to do with the fact that Mati was the least popular character. I don't know. But the fact is that Mati barely even exists. And the same can be said for G. Gi? And the same can be said for Gi as well, with water literally being her only personality trait in this entire episode. But so the aliens have Captain Planet, so now the Planeteers have to compete in this stupid game show in order to free him and keep him from coming to harm. Even though, even if he dies, I assume he just returns to the ring. It's, it's whatever, you know? Let's just let the episode continue if we keep poking holes in it. It's, there's not gonna be much left. 
So in the very first game, Kwame and Plunder are pitted against each other in a trivia knowledge match. Go for it, Kwame! All right, Planeteers, here goes! Ah! The question being, when was the most recent nuclear accident Period. That's it. That's all we get. Kwame, of course, being the nuclear physicist that he is, immediately knows the answer to that question and gets it right. And then this happens. Wonder you pile of bile! <laughs> That's the latest nuclear accident. <laughs> Looks like the eco-villains take an early lead! I mean, that is cheating, right? Like, that's blatant, obvious, just like... We don't want you to win cheating. Granted, you know, at some point in the episode, it, Mr. Kasem does say this. For us, this isn't about good or evil. It's about ratings, baby. So I can forgive kind of the silliness of the game show to an extent, because they do just kind of care about the ratings. It's very accurate for TV. Wait, what? The Stay for Captain Planet TV today, but It's a toxic taste treat. Raw sewage with a dump. This is a weirdly horny episode. And I don't just mean because of this scene. This There's a lot of weird things with Captain Planet in it, just scattered throughout this episode. But that one joke with Wheeler from earlier was indicative of much more to come. I assume this was done in an attempt to appeal to the parents of the kids that were watching the show, because it was probably a really boring show to have on in the background, especially if your kid really liked it. Also, I'd like to point out Captain Planet's gotten a lot stronger since season one. Like, I know he's captured, tied up, gagged, and being force-fed in this particular scene, but in the first season he was sprayed lightly with some polluted goop. And he had to go and rest for a few minutes and, like, come back later. Here, they're force-feeding him toxic sludge, and he's just like, Bleh. Bleh. I don't like it. Bleh. And that's it. That's all you get. He's not, like, really suffering. <laughs> I want him to bleed. Hey, that looks pretty good! You get it? Because he's fat. He doesn't even eat it. He just tears a piece, and it just pops back into place. I don't even think he chews. So, of course, through the power of cheating, the villains beat the Planeteers at this particular game. Meaning Captain Planet got force-fed, and we get a word from our sponsors. This is the best part of the episode, by the way. It just has kind of a fun vibe to it. Still doesn't fit with the vibe of Captain Planet, but as its own standalone segment, I can dig it, I can feel with it, I can vibe it. Free installation in an hour! The aliens are furious with us for polluting our planet. They treat us like dirt for treating our planet like dirt. But in doing so... They actively side with the villains because instead of using their vast amounts of technology and their crazy, crazy power level that they have to, you know, enslave Captain Planet, teleport all the planeteers, get all the villains, make them all work together and not kill each other. Despite that, they've determined it will be easier and more fun to instead destroy the entire planet. Admittedly, if the planet really was the most polluted in the entire galaxy, I feel like I could probably understand it, but considering later on there are ads for more polluted planets and people moving from them to new planets, I don't think it's the most polluted in the galaxy, guys. I think you might be over-exaggerating just a little bit here. So there's several seconds of pointless bickering between the planeteers as they try to figure out who's going to go against Hoggish Greedly in the next fight. They run out of time, and Linka is chosen for them, who is given an air pack in place of her ring. Let me guess, it doesn't work, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. But the game here in question is to prevent Hoggish Greedly from polluting the area and reaching the brown button. Linka's goal is to reach the red button and press it before he presses the brown button, while simultaneously preventing him from polluting the entirety of the water. Don't really know what's to stop either of them from just beelining it directly to the button considering the game ends immediately upon pressing it, but neither of them do it, instead opting to play the game. Oh, and the air pack just starts working again, of course, duh. This is a stupid game. It's a stupid game. It's... <sighs> so the point of that game is to prove that it is easier to create a mess than it is to clean that mess up. And yeah, that's true, you're not wrong about that, but at the exact same time, like, wasn't this show supposed to make kids want to help the environment and want to do things to clean things up? If they really believe that cleaning the environment is going to be more difficult than harming the environment, a lot of people aren't going to do it. Like, I hate to say it like that, but people are lazy. I'm one of them.
If I think something's hard, I'm going to try to avoid it. And here, it really makes it seem hopeless. Like, it makes it seem like everything they've done up until this point has not mattered in the slightest. And that's just because it's easier to pollute than it is to clean. Not because of shitty megacorporations ruining our economy because they want to make a quick buck or nothing like that. That'd be crazy. But it just goes to show it's easier to mess it up than to clean it up. I can't take much more. <laughs> Am I the problem? I feel like I'm anticipating more sex jokes than there actually are, and that's making me see them where they're not. So we're to scoop by this one too, but this feels this feels gratuitous. There are many parts of me you do not know, Yankee. <gasps> okay, yeah, no, it's definitely hornier. There. <sighs> if there's one thing I didn't need in my Captain Planet and the Planeteers, it's teenagers really trying not to dry hump in front of everybody in the audience. Banana has a special wrist-mounted flamethrower for Wheeler to simulate his firepower. What about my heart power? You can have my... <laughs> yeah, the alien just, like, rips his heart out and tries to give it to Mati, and that's that's okay. That's acceptable. We can show that on TV uh, because it's a fake heart, supposedly. Never mind that he just ripped it out of his chest and is still beating, but... It's a fake heart, just trust us on this one. Versus Wheeler. So in this game, we have a relay race with Wheeler and Mati versus Hoggish Greedly and Maul. Who, it, uh, weirdly, is voiced by Tim Curry. Why are you here, Tim? You can do better than this, Timothy. You can do better. In order to win, they have to make it to the end of the racetrack, circle a pole, return, give the baton to their partner, who then have to do the same thing, all while avoiding obstacles that are themed around either pollution or just something that harms the environment slash the planet in general. For instance, in the first moment, Maul gets a forest that he burns down with a laser. Interesting. Fits him, I think, maybe. Who knows? Wheeler gets an exploding semi-truck. <laughs> and the truck is presumably like a fuel truck, like one carrying gasoline. And then Wheeler, in all his intelligence and all of his Big brain boy energy uses fire to seal the hole that the gas is coming out of and somehow doesn't explode and die. <laughs> but Wheeler is just behind whenever the baton is passed from Maul to Hoggish Greedly and then Wheeler passes the baton to Mati, who says nothing, by the way. He says very little while he's running and then gets hit by a trout. He's going to eat that. Oh, okay. No, um, no, he's going to eat that now. Also, I just want to point this out. I noticed this while I was watching the episode. At this point right here, they are almost at the pole that they have to circle, right? They're right there. You see it too. 30 seconds of animation happens between this point and Hoggish Greedly making it to the end of the relay section. 30 seconds with obstacles and everything in their way that just come out of nowhere because there's no space left at the end of the track. Did they even try? Hell yeah, Monty. Go you, man. I mean, you run like an idiot, but that was cool. I can't do that. I'm sorry. It's not your fault, little buddy. Something that bothers me in this episode is not just that Monty has not been a character here, because other than Wheeler and Linka, there aren't any characters in the Planeteers anymore. But Mati, specifically, is treated really strangely. It's almost like the other Planeteers treat Mati as if he's their friend who left their helmet at home today. You know, like, he's their special little buddy, and he's only there as a favor to, like, his mom or something. But if you have this character who's going to be actively doing things and actively being a part of the story, I feel like not only should you give him more agency, but you should also give him personality. And respect. And he doesn't get any of that. Best ways for Earthlings to deal with environmental problems. Look, it's Gaia. Huh? Why did that work? Why did that work? Why? Gee, girl. <sighs> he doesn't even change the image on the face of his computer as far as we're aware. He literally, this computer, this, this piece of shit computer, this crap box, floats his little head over there on its tendril pokes it in front of Guy and goes, hey, look, it's Gaia. And she goes, really? No! 
No, you're not that stupid. You're not that dumb. And then the fact that there is like a solid three seconds from the time that the question is asked to the time that his head actually reaches her that she could have hit the button. Also, Dr. Blight's an idiot. So, Dr. Blight, name one of the five best ways for Earthlings to deal with pollution. Make more, of course. Sorry. Mm, yeah, my doctorate's in philosophy, actually. What does it mean to deal with pollution? Are we forming a valuable trade deal with pollution? Or are we getting rid of pollution? What is the real... So the Planeteers are now in a sudden death match. And in this game, none of the other games before mattered. Because if you win this game, you win the whole game. Regardless of your points, regardless of the scores, regardless of the number of questions you get right, if you win this game... You win the game. The whole game. I don't know the rules. I don't know why this makes sense in this universe. I don't know if it does make sense in this universe. But it's the rules they operate on, and we have to accept them, unfortunately. The Planeteers managed to get four of the five top answers right, family feud style, of course, before not knowing what the first answer is. The villains are then required to create an answer that involves saving the planet versus destroying it, something that they have a very hard time grasping, but do eventually get around to, you know, putting together and doing. They guess a bad answer, despite the fact that Maul, the computer, gave them the right answer, and they chose to not go with it because they're all morons. The answer must be, move to another planet. Yeah. Like, if I could Google an answer versus just taking Bob on his word, I'm gonna Google it every single time, but instead these shit kebabs are just deciding, oh no, he's not the smartest of all of us by far. He's not using logic and facts and reasons. We don't like this guy. That's all we need. Wow, look at Mati getting literally Mike wazowski over there. <laughs> Poor guy. At this point, because of the fact that the Planeteers have won the game, Cap has been freed from his restraints. Now, up until this point, I assumed that Cap was being held literally in his corporeal form through some weird alien technology. That was my excuse. But at this point, once Cap is freed, not only do the Planeteers still not get their powers back, but Cap stays as a solid human being so he can be attacked by Duke Nukem. Cap, what? Why'd she do that? <laughs> like, what was the point? That doesn't even do anything. Like, Wheeler blows up some lights and they get teleported away in a second. Like, did you need to do that? <laughs> Pleading the game show and freeing Captain Planet... All of the Planeteers wake up in their beds the next morning, having all had the same crazy nightmare. I just had the weirdest nightmare. Yeah. And you kissed me. Uh, definitely a nightmare. And none of them are sure if it was real or not, except for the fact that it absolutely was, because it goes and shows the villains all sitting in the game show room still, proving that the episode actually happened and is actually just as stupid as... You know, it could have been. If it was a dream, at least I could excuse some of the wackier elements, especially if it was one of the Planeteer's dreams. But it wasn't. It really happened. And that's it. That's the end of the episode. Yes, really, we don't see Cap do anything other than get tortured and force-fed throughout this entire episode. And the Planeteer alerts are also really bad as well. <laughs> I'm eating my own words after the first episode of this, where I said that the Planeteer alerts were the best part, because initially, they were. But in this case, they have nothing to do with the episode whatsoever. Uh, the first one being very loosely tied to it being about recycling. Um, and the second Planeteer alert, which happens after the credits, it's just about pesticide. They could have gone with deforestation, uh, proper disposal of nuclear waste, preventing nuclear accidents. They could have used anything from the episode, but instead they went with pesticide. And that's it. That's episode 15 of season 4 of Captain Planet. You bet your planet. And it's bad. It's go- it's- it's-, it's a <laughs> Not just because it is poorly animated and the plot doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it also makes it really clear that Hanna-Barbera only acquired the Captain Planet property in order to sell toys, because they don't care about this property. The rules for their power set no longer really apply. None of the characters really exist anymore being just stock figures that are there to sell those toys. And it's way too horny now. I... Of all of the shows, something about its squeaky clean image and the concept of it being an environmentalist show, coupled with the nasty, dirty, sweaty, no good, very bad things floating around in my mind whenever I watch this episode, maybe says more about me than it says about Captain Planet. B but it says a little bit about Captain Planet.
hey, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. Um, I'm almost at a thousand subscribers still. Uh, getting really, really close. I really appreciate everybody so much for subscribing. I'm hoping to be there soon. Hopefully by the end of this series, I'll hit that thousand mark. Um, that's the goal, at least that right now. That's what I'm, I'm optimistically hoping for. I have another video idea planned after this one. I don't know how long it's going to take. I don't know really any of the details about it other than the topic, but we'll get there when we get there. I gotta finish this one first. I can't be making any plans while this one's still baking in the oven, you know? <sighs> but yeah, y'all have a great rest of your night.